Now, my, my good colleague from Texas says 94 percent of voters said voting was easy in 2020. So why don't we keep it that way? Isn't it true that all of the changes that we are arguing about are post-2020? And is it an overwhelming likelihood that this number, if these changes are allowed to go into effect, will go way down? So yes, we agree. Keep the 2020 laws. Maybe we should improve them. But right now, what we're combating is a series of legislators, 19, 33 laws that will make this number surely go down because it makes voting less hard. So I, we agree. 2020 worked out okay. I guess my friend is saying the big lie is false because Donald Trump said it was fraudulent. I would thank my colleague for his chart. Mr. President, would the senator yield for a question? I sure would. Can you give me an example of, uh, of one of the laws passed in Georgia or Texas since the 2020 election, which you believe is, uh, suppresses the right to vote? Uh, there are a long list of them, which I've listed in my speeches. Let me just give one or two. One, making, making early voting places and drop-off voting places many fewer. Number two, taking in the largest county, Democratic county, African-American county in Georgia, and taking away the bipartisan ability to collect those votes. Three, in Georgia, making it a crime that if you're standing on line, um, uh, you can't be fed. And the lines, by the way, according to the reports I get, are much longer in African-American communities than in white suburban communities, making it much, much harder much, much, you, making it a crime, rather, to give people water or sandwich. So I'm going to now give my remarks, but I thank my colleague for the question, well, and I'm President, going to take the floor. Mr. President, so, if I could just Mr. Mr. President, ask one more question, clarify last question. the response. Yes. Um, is the senator suggesting that ballot harvesting is, um, should be required in all 50 states? That is, the ability of a partisan or participant in a political election to go around to nursing homes or to other vulnerable populations and collect ballots and turn them in? If the person in, if the gentleman would yield, as long as there's no fraud, if a person in a nursing home can't get to the polling place and sign they want to vote and someone collects their ballot, nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's good. That makes it easier for them to vote. All of these things that they bring up, there's been no evidence of fraud. None. Donald Trump has not pr produced any evidence of fraud. He lost by 7 million votes, and yet he's saying he won the election. And we all know what's motivating our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Obeisance to Donald Trump. I would guess most of them know that the election was not stolen, that the big lie doesn't take effect. But Trump has such power over the Republican Party, such power, that they, they do what he wants in the legislatures and here in the Senate. And I would remind my good friend from Texas, that his fellow Texans, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, proudly supported extension of the Voting Rights Act. Proudly extend, or did that. It was bipartisan until Donald Trump came over and, in my opinion, poisoned the Republican Party on voting rights. We could use a little resistance to Donald Trump. We see it from a good number of Republicans out in the country. We see it from a good number of Republican commentators, but we don't see it here in the Senate, and that's unfortunate, and I'm not going to yield for a further question. 